guess it's obvious that some don't think the same Like when you fall and find a way to point the blame Loving, running from one thing at a time Yes, it's obvious you're always on my mind. Okay, so I'm here today uh, in Fire Station Creative with two of the core members of the band Rab, Robin Smith and Finlay Johnson. Robin, Finlay, welcome to the show. Thank you, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. I uh, know you as a country band. Do you think that's a fair description? Yeah, I would say so. I have a lot of um, country influences. I think I've sort of described it as Americana, yeah. which is it's, yeah a mix of country, blues, and, folk and, and sort of folk. There's a lot of folk influences there as well. Perhaps but yeah, I would say that's pretty accurate. Yeah, more yeah. accurate to say Americana, yeah. 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 So I first met you guys um, when you uh, first performed at a memorial concert for my own father. Yes. Uh, which was about maybe four years ago. Uh, in in uh, the gallery downstairs, yeah, and I was blown away by your performance. I thought you were just wonderful, and I knew that we had to we had to interview you for the podcast at some point. Um, oh, thank you. So, um, yeah, I, I was I was uh, really amazed by by your your, your talents, especially your banjo playing. Oh, uh, thank family. you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was hoping you were going to bring that today. Yeah. Oh, um, but we were going to actually, and then we just thought we'd keep it keep it quite simple. simple yeah, <laughs> should have brought the banjo. Yeah. I don't know if I told you this before, but I uh, actually got a banjo at school for passing my exams. I thought that would be a great means of attracting girls, but no, it doesn't. <laughs> that was a... Yeah, that's... I, I kept up for about six months and then realised it, it, it was not having it the desired effect. It wasn't having the desired girls, effect. No. A banjo is not an aphrodisiac. No. But um, yeah, so... Uh, I heard saxophone's quite good for that. Saxophone's what you should have done. Apparently. Sax, yeah. Yeah, girls uh, like the saxophone. Yeah, in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, I was actually just talking to somebody uh, who was at school with you, Robin. You went mm. to Queen Anne High School. I did, yeah. So did I, um, obviously at a different time. Um, and, and she was telling me that uh, she was in a, a, a thing called folk group with you. She remembers you being the star of, of uh, something called folk group. Do you, folk do you remember group. that? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I'm trying to remember. We did a, I think we maybe did one performance of that. I think I was playing guitar. It's been a while. Mm. I'm trying to remember. There was a, we did quite a lot of different groups. There was the, the choir group where there was like a little singing medley group as well and a guitar group, and there was folk group. Um, and I think that was later on, and we must have done maybe one of the school concerts. But I really, I loved it, because it was just that, that style of music was what I really liked, to be honest. So, yeah, it was good fun. I actually forgot all about that until you mentioned it. So you were singing and playing guitar at that time. So you'd be, mm -hmm. she, she said that you were, you know, in sixth year when she was in first or second year, thereabouts. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, um, I think when I started singing and playing guitar I was probably about 11 or 12 um, and then I just since picking up the guitar I just did it all throughout high school I don't really do it as much now because I've got Finley here <laughs> um, so I'm a bit lazy with that now but yeah by by fifth sixth year I think I was quite confident doing it at that point it was good fun lots right. of fun well, well she definitely highlighted uh, your your voice and, and that was what I oh. what I really noticed um, when, when you performed um, for the first time down here that was uh, uh, you, you, have, you have a really sort of unique voice and uh, I've actually been to Nashville you know um, no yeah and uh, you're as good as any of the people performing there, I can assure you. Um, <laughs> oh. I went around all the honky tonks and uh, a long time ago, and you know, I, I, I would highly recommend that you guys take a visit to Nashville and yeah. and just uh, you know, just elbow your way in and, and See what ask it's to like. perform. You have to play for tips though. That's yeah, the, that's how it's done there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very different from here. I've always wanted to go. That's definitely on the bucket list, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So tell me how you got started in music, Finley. Oh, well, both my parents are musicians, and just kind of, I feel like it was it was so long ago that I probably don't realise that it was forced upon me. 
It didn't feel like it was forced upon me, but maybe it was. I was very, very young. I just started playing the guitar and then just kind of um, practiced and practiced and practiced. Right. Since, like, I don't know. like What, what was your first performance publicly? Oh, Again, probably too far back in my memory to actually like... Is this guy got Alzheimer's or something? <laughs> <laughs> um, I I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, I think, were you not? Because you did play in your um, parents' band at one point. I don't think that was like your first performance, but you were quite young, were you not? Yeah, but I'd done stuff before as well. I, I feel like, yeah, very fairly young. Uh-huh. Okay, so still in primary school and whatnot and stuff like that. So how did you guys come together um, as a, a duet? So we met at uni. We were both studying music at the, the pop course at Napier in Edinburgh. Okay. And you joined in second year. And um, Joined uni or, or the band? Joined uni. Right, yeah. And I was writing some songs and things, and I remember... I actually, I do remember the first time this kind of came together and you were around at my flat and I showed Finlay one of my songs called Our Flight and I sort of played it on the guitar and and you liked it. That was, that was the scariest thing as well. I think you were the first person to really hear something I'd written mm -hmm. properly. Um, and he's like, oh, I can hear how this is going to work. I can hear how the, the, the band would sound. I can hear, you're, he's a producer, he's a really good producer. Um, I'm like, okay, so he takes the guitar off me. It's far better than me, the guitar. And and he starts playing my song back at me. I've just played it to him. And I, I sing it, and it just sounds great. And it clicked. Mm -hmm. And I think from then on, um, I showed him all my songs, pretty much. And it kind of just went from there, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We were in a wedding band for a while together at the start as well. And I think that's that was when I first met you. And then it was... We, you know, friendship grew and, um, yeah, it's do, kind of worked out, hasn't it? Do, do you think it's useful to, to work as a, as, a, as a cover band or a wedding band to help hone your craft? Yes. Um, yes and no. Like, it was definitely, for me, um, as, as a singer, it's really good practice. Um, and I think just keeping up the vocal stamina and doing a wedding every week mm is great for my voice and I think it's been really useful in doing gigs for my own stuff. Um, I think it's strengthened a lot in the last year since, because we're also in a wedding band currently, mm -hmm. um, together with another five, well another five, there's five of us, another three guys. Um, so I found it useful, but I don't know, what do you think for you? Not personally for me, like, well, I don't know, yeah, yeah, no, it's all music, so, mm -hmm. yeah. It's but it's it sustains you financially as well, of course. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah, yeah it does. Yeah. So it's good. For it's that. just good to be doing music. Exactly. So, so you're the, the the songwriter and you're the producer. Do, do you ever uh, get involved in, in in writing the songs as well? Not like I don't I don't really do any lyrics or anything like that. I'll come in and be like, maybe if it could go, like maybe do this. Mm -hmm. Try this try chord this, Try this chord, maybe need a bridge or something like that. I never really... Mm -hmm. I'm never the one coming in. Right. So Being like, I've written this song, can you sing it? It's always Robin's songs. Mm -hmm. Right. And how did the, the songs come to you, Robin? Do you set time aside to, to write a song, or could it be when you're driving and it, suddenly the, the muse is upon you? Um, it's always at really inconvenient times. Like... <laughs> I'm trying to go to sleep or something. It's always night time and I'll get um sometimes there'll be a little melody in my head and I'm like, Oh, that sounds really good and oh, I'll forget that tomorrow. So I'm kinda of reaching for my phone in the dark and, and put on the little voice memos and I've got these like hilarious little whispery recordings <laughs> of something that sounds terrible mm. the next day I'm thinking, What on earth is I thinking? Um sometimes there's that little melody, a little hook, or, or just some lyric ideas. I'll, I'll just be typing on notes, lyric ideas. Um, and then if I can remember, I'll actually do something about it. Maybe the next day if I've got time or... But it, it's kind of an impulsive thing. Like, it, if it doesn't happen quickly or if I don't um, act on it, 
I just kind of forget about it or I forget the reason, like what do those lyrics mean? I don't know anymore. You yeah, know? It's important to remember the sentiments as mm-hmm. well, isn't it? And you have to, it's almost like a wave that you have to keep surfing yeah. in order to to convert that into a, a creative output. Mm-hmm. Like, do you ever, when you're sleeping, dream songs? I don't know. Uh, I would know, love for that to happen, well, but I you don't. Know, you, you know who famously dreamt a song, no. which was uh, Paul McCartney? Mm. Oh, did he? And, and he, he dreamt of a song um, that went like scrambled eggs. <laughs> He's got such lovely legs. And then that became yesterday. <laughs> That's amazing. I've not didn't heard know that. that story. No. No. Uh, yeah. I but would ha- love to do that. It happens to me. I'm, I'm a painter, I'm an artist, and uh, yeah. I regularly um, actually dream images, you know. But of course, dreaming is a visual mm-hmm. process so cool. anyway. So I wake up with ideas, ideas for, for paintings. Yeah. I wondered if it happened to musicians. It probably it does. Probably does. I, I don't even. I don't remember any dream I have, let alone if it's musical or <laughs> anything. True. It's gone immediately as I wake up. Annoyingly. That yeah. is so cool that you get that in dreams. Yeah. I'd love that. That'd be great. Do you, do you guys dream at all? Do you remember your dreams? I, I remember don't. all of my. You don't remember any. Yours, I don't remember do any. No. I remember all of mine. They're yeah. really vivid, and I can uh, lucid dream sometimes as well. You can. You yeah, can I just dreaming. am aware that I'm dreaming, and I can kind of control it. But not always. That's great, isn't it? Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I I once asked a DJ friend of mine. I said, "What do you think is the supreme medium of of the arts?" Uh-huh. And I thought I assumed he was going to say music, but he said he thought about it, and then he said dreaming. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you have an audience of one, but um, and it's yourself. But I thought that was a great oh, answer. That's good. That's a good yeah. answer, isn't it? Yeah. Like they're like little movies <laughs> inside your head. Eh? So. Um, Tell, tell me uh, about your EP, which I believe came out in 2021. Is that correct? Yes, that was February 2021. That was the last thing I released as well, which that's just too long ago. Um, that was really fun. So that um, before the, the pandemic and COVID and everything, it was a band. There was me, there was Finlay and another three members and it was quite a big Americana, but more sort of rocky sound. And I've got two singles out on Spotify that kind of around, were around that time. And then, yeah, COVID happened. And I found myself um, writing songs more for me, a singer-songwriter, and not for a band. Because there was a band, I'm like, I need to write this for a band. So the song, the styles, it all kind of changed. It was more folky, singer songwritery, um, And, of course, I showed, showed Finlay the new stuff. And... Um, there were some, I'm trying to think how many there would have been, maybe six songs, and we picked four of them, and mm-hmm. uh, I think it was you, because you have your friend, um, Lewis McLaughlin, who's also a, a singer-songwriter, he's great, um, but he's got his own recording studio, at the time it was in his flat, his haunted flat, it was totally haunted, yeah, was it was really freaky, wasn't it, <laughs> um, in Glasgow, <laughs> and Finley's like, let's book in with, with Lewis, let's record it, mm. and I was like, okay, yeah, let, let's do it, let's do it, um, and one of the, the the title track, Open Eyes, we had banjo on that. That was the first banjo song, mm-hmm. which Finlay l- learned the, the banjo purely for that song, <laughs> to be honest. And, yeah, and they were just practicing away the whole time. Mm-hmm. And we've managed to put in other songs after that. But um, So he's only been playing banjo for a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd played it <laughs> kind of like in the way where you like I'll learn one song and then put it down and forget about it and then kind of came back and it didn't come back naturally it was still like this thing is quite a challenge yeah Yeah. you play it like you've been playing all your life well thank you (laughs) (laughs) really good yeah you did pick it up really quickly um yeah (laughs) so that's cool i remember um you know when the, the local media covered it but you know you've since gone on to perform on the bbc or or was it just was it just played on it the BBC? It was just played yeah, on the played. BBC, okay. but it was such a huge thing at the time because that was the first. So the the EP was released. We'd recorded it in, I think we'd booked two day, three days in the studio with Lewis. Yeah, three days. It was bulk mental. Of it, yeah. Really, really long days. We got the four songs down. Um, I'm I'm singing in it, back in vocals, and I think I did some tambourine or was it egg shaker? You for one of them her. and there was one of them that i just i just couldn't get it right so, and then i'm doing kick, kick drum, drum so we yeah. just, it was just the three of us lewis played a couple of fiddle things on it finley um you, you played everything else on the songs 
basically, didn't you? You didn't play the mandolin on you that one. You didn't play the mandolin on... Yeah, that's true. Lewis played that one. So it was just kind of a thing with the three of us. And um, I just didn't think it was going to get that, um, I don't know, attention when it came out. And I had emailed the... It was another country with Ricky Ross. I'd emailed them kind of as a bit of a... Not as a joke, but I just thought there's no way it's they're going to... You mm -hmm. know, there's so many people email and and you don't hear back. Um, and the EP was coming out that Friday and they got back to me on the Wednesday. They'd, um, they'd emailed back and said, we're going to play you, one of your songs tonight on the Ricky Ross show. And I was like, oh my gosh. And um, they, they asked who my label was. I was like, I'm, I'm not signed. I'm, I'm just. Uh, I'm, I'm between labels right now. Yeah, like I'm, <laughs> I'm just starting out, you know. Um, so that was really, really cool. Um, yeah, tried not to cry actually. Just thought that was the first sort of big, big thing was on the radio, and it was BBC, you know. So yeah, it would do wonders for your confidence as well, and mm -hmm. it validates, yeah. you know. I mean, from their perspective, your music would would shine out from among the rest. I mean, it's I can't. I can't tell you how, how impressed I was by it. So oh, it's, it's no surprise to me that you were on the BBC, but for you, that, that would feel like a big step forward. It was, uh, yeah. yeah, it was nice. And I think it just, it created a little buzz around it as well. I think folk, even just friends and people that I know were sort of like, oh, oh, this is actually, oh, this is really good. And yeah, you were on the BBC. There's like a... That was the first one that got back to you as well, because you'd sent out like a mass mass email yeah i just tried to get in touch with so many folk just tried radio to radio stations and whatnot yeah and then that was the one that did it first so it was that was yeah it was a huge surprise yeah <laughs> i thought it'd be maybe like a, a a local one which would have been amazing but it, no it was yeah it, it must have felt cool. kind of surreal hearing your own music coming through the, the airwaves oh it was really weird i had i was in my mum's and we sat in the living room put the telly on put it through the speakers it was it was really weird hearing it, yeah, and just the the introduction of your name and who you're like, oh my gosh, that's me. <laughs> it was really Ross. weird, yeah. It was Ricky Ross. I said my name. <laughs> <laughs> it was really, it well, was really cool. Well, you should get used to it because I think there's more success to come for sure. You know, Thanks and uh, yeah, I know. yeah. So, so tell me, tell me about you know the the influences on your music, you know, and and what what informs your music. Um, or who informs your music, I should say. Yeah, it's it's changed over the years. Um, I think more recently, or, or around the time of the EP, and even up until now, there's been a lot of um, still country. Alison Krauss, actually. Um, and I didn't really listen to her growing up or anything like that. It was you. It was Finley who had sort of introduced me to her more. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of folk will sort of compare my style to hers, and mm -hmm. I'm thinking I don't. I've not actually heard her before, so it was kind of interesting. Um, she's got beautiful voice, so she's been a big influence, especially on the production side of the songs, mm. how we want them to sound. Um, and more recently, Casey Musgraves, that sort of country pop. Um, she's got that whole banjo synth thing going on, which we're really, really liking. Yeah. Mm. Um, Shania Twain. Always. Always. We're actually we're going to go see her in September this year. Buzzing. Buzzing. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm trying yeah. to think who else who am I missing? The chicks. A lot of um female uh, kind of country, country pop singers mm. in the last couple of years I've been listening to and I've, using. I met Amy Lou Harris once. No oh yeah, I yeah. we love her as well. Oh was, my gosh. I was just walking down an alleyway in New York <laughs> and she came out the back of a, a concert. Oh and, my uh, goodness. Amy <laughs> <"Hey, I'm> Harris. <laughs> so random. What yeah. was she like? Yeah, she's very nice. She gave oh. us her, gave us her autograph, and uh, That's yeah, so cool. it's quite an experience. Yeah. That's cool. But um, it, I think when when you're at the stage you're at in your career, you're you're obviously still young. Um, it's inevitable that people will want to compare you to other other performers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, and and that can be flattering, of course. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And um, but you know. Y Naturally, your your own voice emerges out, out of all that, and, mm -hmm. and you, you you carve your own your own niche in the in the landscape, you know. So, yeah. um, I I think you are unique. You you have that star quality, both of you, and I understand that you're expanding your band. Though it's not just you two. You're you're you've got two other members. Um, yeah. Sort yes. of on board now. 
Um, so we've got Laura McLeod, um, who, I mean, she's kind of between Dunfermline and Oban. She stays in Oban just now, and it's amazing that she'll actually drive through for a practice. It's like two and a half hours or something. She's just lovely. She's got a beautiful voice, and she's great at playing the guitar. Mm-hmm. Um, I really just want to stand and sing, um, and so she's made that possible as well because she'll. She's great, isn't she? And and yeah. we've got three part harmonies now, which is what I had originally in the band before, and I really really wanted to bring them back. Love harmonies, um, and it gives you a little bit more freedom to play something else, something than else, the guitar, a bit of banjo yeah. or or slide guitar. Um, so that's been great. We've had Laura. When did we have our first? Would have been last summer, with our gig in uh, in Leith, mm-hmm. and that kind of kick started it. So that's been really fun. And very recently. Um, we've played a gig with a bass player, Leo, who's a friend of Finley's. Yeah. Um, was it from college? Yeah. yeah. And he's great as well. And he just picked it up. He's just back from, he was touring in New Zealand. In Australia, yeah. Um, who was he doing it with again? Uh, Jellyman's Daughter. Jellyman's Daughter. Have you heard of them? I haven't, no. They're, They're really good. And it's a sort of folky Americana vibe. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So that's when I thought he'll be, he'll be good for, for this style. Mm. Um, and he's great. So we've got another gig uh, next month with the four of us. And just having the bass there, <laughs> we kept saying it to him, the difference it makes. It's like everybody says this. He keeps joining, know. joining folk <laughs> bands and then they keep telling him how much a difference his bass makes. And he's yeah. like, uh-huh. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> but it really did make a difference. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, I'm hoping to just keep expanding it. Um, but it's great to be able to, I don't know, I think just be a bit versatile and... Mm-hmm. We can do this as a duo, we could do it as a trio. Um, if we've got a bigger gig, we could do a full band. And um, all this under the, the banner of Rab. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so t- tell me, you know, what's behind the name? It's <sighs> a really good question. Um, <laughs> it was originally, uh, well, I suppose it's more of an artist name of mine now than it is a band name. Mm. Um, it started off as a bad name and then it just kind of, it was everybody in the band were like, these are your songs, this is you, you are Rab. And it was a bit strange at first, and then it kind of stuck. And um, we're still just kind of trying to figure that out. It, is, it, is it an acronym? Like, <laughs> it wasn't yeah, it at first. It, it, but yeah, it, was, it kind of became a... Um, it was more of a joke between A bit us. of a joke, yeah, like Rob, Robin and a band. Oh, I see. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> But that's not where it Which came from. Which is totally not what it is, because yeah. that's terrible. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> that was a, yeah, a bit of a joke. Oh, that, um, that, that's good enough for Rob and Adam. Yeah. Band. I, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's great, uh, yeah. 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 So um, the, the the two people that you mentioned, they're, mm. you, th- you think they're a, a permanent fixture to, to your your setup? Um, or or do, you, do you just kind of um, invite people when they're available to perform, perform with you? Um... It looks sort of, I'm hoping it's going to be a, a fixed thing. Um, but, I mean, we did a, a, a So Far gig a few weeks ago. I messaged them, are you free? They said they weren't. Mm. And we were able to just do it, the two of us. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I'm hoping that, you know, any chance we get, I'll ask them for any gigs that we've got, if if they're looking for for that kind of setup. We do a lot of, I do a lot of support slots. And a lot of the time they are just looking for, me and a guitar or Finley and I will do banjo and guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Um so yeah. It's just waiting for the opportunity to it's grow that and use it. As well. and f- like, yeah. You don't wanna just That's you don't true. pay people for doing because it's our job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like so we wouldn't want to do stuff for free all the time. Yeah. We would yeah. like to get paid for the stuff we do, so course, yeah. we would expect the same for them. For them. Like so if it's them. like a a free gig or a gig that's not paying very well, I probably would just do it the two of us. Mm-hmm. Um, and if there's a fee, then yeah. we'll, yeah. Sure. So y- you guys participated in the Out With Festival. Per- perhaps you don't know, but I'm one of the, the founder committee members of the Out With Festival. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I, unfortunately, I was working the whole time, so I wasn't able to, to see you um, or uh, appreciate you. But, but um, yeah. Uh, it's going to go ahead again this year. Have you had the invitation yet? I have not, not yet, actually. No. I'll get on to Johnny. <laughs> make, make sure that, that he books you in. Yeah. Thank but, you. Uh, yeah, it'd be great to have you there with the festival. Yeah. T- tell me about your... your uh, do, um, have you played other festivals apart from that? Um, 
No. Right. That's a good start. I think, yeah, a it's a great start. start. Yeah. We played in uh, 2019. Mm-hmm. And it was a more uh, kind of rockier sound with the other band. And then um, and we just played last last September as well. And it was it was actually just a really cool experience for, I think we were both a little bit in a nice way sort of surprised because I, um, a lot of the, the folk that I knew or my friends and family and things, they were all really busy. And you all, I always tried to encourage them to come along so that I'm actually singing to people, you know. <laughs> and um, a lot of them were busy and I just tried to promote it. And I had absolutely no idea who was going to be there, if anyone was going to be there. Mm. And I remember at the time making a wee joke, it probably was to you or my mum or something, thinking it might just be us, you know. Um, I was on first, um, so there was a little bit of that pressure there. I was really excited, so glad to be part of the whole thing. But I just thought this might be a really quiet crowd because it's the start of the day. And just before we started, there was like, I wouldn't say it was packed, but it was pretty busy. Mm. Um, and it was a bunch of people that I didn't know. And uh, I sort of looked to you and I thought, oh my gosh, we've got we've got an audience here. And, and yeah. it was kind of a lovely surprise. I think I just kind of expected the worst. Um, I just thought that's amazing. And then after, there were several people that had come up and spoken to us and said, oh, we didn't know who you were, but we, we saw you on the, the poster and, um, and we looked you up on Spotify and we wanted to come and see you. And mm-hmm. um, that's the first time that's ever happened to me. <laughs> I just yeah. thought, wow, that's well, your, so your cool. Your reputation precedes you, obviously. Um, yeah, that was a really big thing. Yeah, for just nice. They could, they could have gone to see. They could have gone to see anybody else. Loads of different else. stuff because yeah. everything going on in that. There's like loads of stuff happening, but they well, chose to come and see us. Well, well we have some, we have some quite big really names nice. out there with the festival. So mm. you, you know, if you're stealing audiences away from big names, that's that's good, you know. <laughs> and here, um, what, what was the venue you were performing at? Uh, PJs. PJs, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, good. Well, I mean, I remember uh, there was a queue right down the street at, at outside this venue. You oh know, yes, and I, was, I heard about that. I was the checking people's tickets, and yeah, it was uh, it was the same all over. Though I think yeah, it was, it was really, really, good. really, really, really good turnout, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, thousands of people mm-hmm. came. So we're hoping to build on that success again this year. Totally. Yeah, that was yeah, the first year really back, well. wasn't it? First year back after after COVID. Yeah, good going. Yeah, yeah. That, that was a success, and we actually. Um, it's all volunteers that that organise the festival, um, and uh, that's good. Yeah, so it's it's not it's not easy for for people to do that in their free time. Mm-hmm. But, that's a lot of organising. Um, yeah, and a lot of fundraising and everything. But uh, people are very passionate. Drives you though, you know. That's yeah. that's the secret to everything in life. All, all kind of success is mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. that has to be fueled with passion. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I was hoping that you guys might uh, give us a song or two. Um, for the yes. podcast, yeah, yeah. Cool. So, Finley, Robin, what are you going to play? This is a song called Muse. Nothing to lose 
Sensational, really. Thank you so yeah. much. Wonderful, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, the performance is so tight. Do you spend a lot of time rehearsing, the two of you? Uh, uh, to be honest, we we did, and we have gigs here and there, and we've been playing that song for a while, so I think it has just kind of gotten used to it. And yeah, we played it a lot, so we're tighter now. With any of the new ones. We need a little bit more practice, I think, to get it. Yeah. That kind of... We've also played just in general together for the past mm. five, five years. Five years or something. Really. Yeah. So it's just kind of get used to the each style. other. Yeah. And the that was... True. That sounded perfect from over here. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you. So Thank you. Th did you ever uh, write poetry, Robin? I... I did actually, but that was because I had to, and it was for <laughs> <laughs> for school and things like that. But I loved it, um, and even in primary school, I loved creative writing, um, just writing stories. Yeah, uh, I well, loved it. The, the lyrics for for that song, all your work, are inspired, and and I wondered if there are poets who influence your work as well as notable songwriters. I'm, I'm sad to say there. There aren't. I can. Um, I've really not got into. I suppose poetry is kind of lyric writing, but I don't. Yeah. Um, I don't really even read a lot of poetry or anything. I really should. I think it would be helpful. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was just trying to parse out. You know, the, the influences over the music and the influences over the the the, the lyrics. The lyrics. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, the lyrics are are special, and you know, you should be really proud of that. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I think we might have time for one other song if if you can manage it for us. Yeah. Count in concrete feet cross the line to live. Talking numbers deep 
walking in the street. Side is turning green, path is turning gold. Living in a dream, walking in the street. Life has just begun. Life has just begun. Counting concrete steps, heavy load to hold. In your head, walking down the road, far away the day is gone. Can go on. Just begun. Life has just begun. Life has just begun. so fun to do it's like yeah your voice really came came over beautifully at the end there it's, it's special thank you so much well guys thank you so much for coming in to oh. uh fsc podcast and uh, i hope you come back sometime oh absolutely i look forward it. well i look forward to hearing your uh, new music that's released later this year yeah so um do, you don't have a date for that yet though do i you? don't uh, we've still got a couple of bits and bobs to do before yeah. i decide a date but uh really excited to get some new stuff out so yeah thank you so much for having us yeah thank you very much mm. well thank you <laughs> <laughs>